Hey, this is Skipan, and I'm back with another illustration breakdown. This time I really want to go take a deep dive into how I color hair. In my other illustration breakdowns, it's always a time lapse. So it's difficult to, in a short amount of time, explain exactly what goes into coloring hair. So in this video, I want to have a static image here, no time lapse, go into detail with layers and everything. Uh, I'm getting over a cold right now, so I'm sorry about my voice, but let's get started. So we have right here the drawing with all my layers right here. You see the folder called hair. I'm going to go ahead and take these away. So what I start off with is a basic color just to make sure that everything is within the lines. Above that, the first layer that I make is layer 62. Now this is going to be my highlight color. Not necessarily the brightest color for the hair, but it's that base highlight color that I want to use. Then what I'll do is I'll make a layer that is just the shadows. So once you have your shadow layer ready, what I do is I take my shadow color and apply it to both of those slots, both of the color slots. What I then do is I take a fairly sharp brush and make it like an eraser by pressing C or this right here. You then erase where the highlights would go, just like this. So what you're doing is revealing the highlight layer underneath. I think it's a really non-destructive, interesting way to color hair. Is then you could take another layer, run an airbrush through it, and you'll see that the highlights are intact. It's just the shadow layer, because you're erasing from the shadow layer, you can really easily go and manipulate that, add on top of it, etc. So what's cool is if you liked what you did above the shadow layer, but you don't like the shadow layer, you can always duplicate the shadow layer and then keep on adding to it, manipulate it, or, you know, subtract it like this. And there's a variety of ways that you could do this. You could do it with brush tools, or I really like the fingertip tool. But then you might think, oh, actually, I like that first one better, and bam, right there, everything's intact. All right, so then let's go ahead and delete these and get back to what I was doing. So this is what I ended up with. What I would typically do at this point is add a color to give some variation to the shadows. <clears throat> so it's usually going to be a color that's slightly off of the main color that I'm using for the shadows. For the shadows, I had a brown color, so I'm going for more of like a little purple you can find whatever works for you, but I feel like adding this is a really good way to give it depth. And then we'll do the same thing for the highlights. So if I take away the shadow layer, it kind of looks weird here. But, because just the way you have it laid out, you can add something on top of the highlights. Whether you want to make it a brighter highlight, like this, or something closer to the shadows, you can do that. So I decided to go with something to give it a little bit more depth, something more towards the shadows. But this process really gives you the freedom to do a lot of different things. Once I find the colors that I like, I then go and make a layer folder, and in there I'll just put different layers for detail. Make sure that you have it in through. You can see here it's, I just, I've added quite a bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and break this down for you. So with layer 66, what I'm trying to do is add a few more details to the strands of hair, break them up so that they're not as solid. It doesn't have to be a darkened layer, but that's just what I use most of the time. Then for 67 through 78, layer 67 through 78, I'm just adding different details. I'll go slowly here, adding more shadows, more details to the highlights and then just really trying to mold it into what I want it to be. So I ended up with this, with more defined differences between the shadows, highlights, second shadow, like a different color, everything is really just defined. So once I have it fleshed out the way I wanted, I usually put an add glow layer on top of that. You don't have to do it, but it gives it a little bit more contrast, it makes it a little bit brighter. If you found that you had some dull colors, this might be able to liven it up. You really don't have to apply that much. I usually just take the highlight color and put an airbrush really quick through just a few 
few places that I think it would be necessary. <clears throat> Even without the add glow, it gives it a little bit of variation. You could use different effects, but typically at this point, once I have everything flushed out, I like to add something on top of that. And then we have, and then we have the typical anime highlight. I use screen, but you could use a different effect. And it's just taking the highlight color and then applying it where you think the highlight would be the strongest and then using one of these blend effects to make it stronger than your base highlight. Here on layer 79, I'm adding some different colors to give it some variation. As again, shadows don't necessarily have to be a darker color, they could just be a discoloration, something with less contrast because the light isn't hitting it as harsh. And then I continue to flush it out, try to mold it into something that I like. For layer 118, I have another add glow layer, and this is really to show some transparency. If you have a section of the hair that there are less strands in it, it might be good to paint some of the color underneath that and make it a little bit more realistic. On top of that, my final add glow layer, just to really give it the final highlight and make sure everything's in order. So that's it for this section of it. What I did, uh, I was drawing this on the iPad Mini 5, but wanted to make some changes to the anatomy and different things, so I brought it onto the PC and merged some of the layers to change the anatomy and whatnot. So it's the same thing as the previous file, I've just moved a few parts around trying to change it and get the anatomy a little bit better. But in that process, I did merge the layers. And if you've seen the final drawing, you know it looks slightly different. I find it's really difficult to draw black hair, so what I tend to do is do a lighter color and then, towards the end, change that to be closer to black hair. It's something that's great about digital drawing, you can always change things as you go along. But let me go into some more detail. What I typically do is then, after merging all the layers, duplicate it and start to change the contrast, the tone, saturation, etc. What I usually use is brightness contrast, hue saturation, luminosity, and the tonal curve. So with this one I added more contrast with the tonal curve, but at 80% opacity. And you could just tune it to whatever you like, and I thought this is exactly what I want, so then I'll take what I like, merge everything together, and then start to change the color. Now this is a little bit too strong for me, so I toned it down to about 20%. And this gave me exactly the color I wanted, added these last two final details, and on top of that I might have added a few strands of hair, etc, but this is generally how I tend to color things. I think some of the techniques, like using the blend layers, are very popular among anime artists, but the way that I do that first highlight and shadow layer is something that I haven't really seen too much, and it's something that I'm still trying to develop and see what works for myself. At this point I do feel like the process is a little bit overly complicated, it typically takes me about an hour, an hour and a half to really get all the coloring done, and I think it is just a little bit too much for me lately, so I want to try to maybe make things more close to something like this, keep things a little bit simpler. But let me know what you think. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out in the comments and I will try to answer as best as I can. I hope you learned something today, and if you're interested in more tutorials like this, please let me know. Thanks and I hope I see you next time.